All right, we're going to do a lab called The Crucible. Not like The Crucible you may have read in your English class that Arthur Miller played. No, this is about a piece of equipment called a crucible. Um, you'll be using a crucible and a lid during this lab. Crucibles are kind of little like ceramic dishes. They're small. They're like, like this big-ish. And they have little lids that we're going to put on them. Okay. Um, they're definitely like handheld. They're tiny little dishes. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to put sodium bicarbonate, which is basically baking soda, into the dish. Uh, and we're going to heat it to cause a decomposition reaction. Now the trick is that we don't know which way sodium bicarbonate decomposes. There are four different possible reactions that sodium bicarbonate might use to decompose by it, and we have to do this lab to figure out which one. Um, now the neat thing that we do know is that all of these decompositions end with one solid and one or more gases. Um, and those gases, when you take the lid off, are going to escape. Um, and you can actually, if you look very closely, it's hard to see, but if you look very closely, when you take the lid off at the end, you will be able to see some, like, shimmering in the air, um, which could be an indication of some gas escaping, um, depending on if you, you know, what you did in the lab. Um, you're going to measure out two grams of sodium bicarbonate. Uh, it may not be exact. It's okay if it is not exactly two grams. All right, please don't clog up the line for the scales by trying to get exactly two grams. You're going to have a little weigh boat. Those are those little plastic uh, things. You put that on the scale. You add sodium bicarbonate into the weigh boat until the mass of the thing, the weigh boat, has gone up by about two grams. It doesn't have to be exact, okay? It doesn't have to be exact. Um, but whatever it is that you get you're going to put here as your initial mass. Then you're going to pour the sodium bicarbonate into your crucible um, and put it over a Bunsen burner. Your teacher will show you in person exactly what that's supposed to look like um, for safety reasons. There's some safety stuff we've got to talk about for sure. Um, but you'll have the crucible set up over a Bunsen burner. You heat the crucible for 10 minutes, and that addition of energy is what's going to cause the thing to decompose. Um, be careful when you turn the Bunsen burner off. You have to let the crucible cool down. But remember that a hot crucible will look the same as a cold crucible. You're not going to know from looking at it that it's hot. Don't touch it with your fingers, genius. Okay? Um, if you move it, you should definitely use tongs. And you may not be allowed to personally move it at all. Your teacher may decide that they will move it for you. Um, that's up to your teacher. Regardless, once it's cooled down, you're going to um, pour the baking soda um, back onto a weigh boat. But what you're going to do is you're going to zero the weigh boat on the scale first, then dump the baking soda uh, into the weigh boat, and then you'll know how much it weighs after heating. And you're going to write that right here. The change in mass is what you're going to do when you subtract the before and after. We know the mass is going to change because all of our possible reactions have gases as products, and when you take the lid off, those gases are going to escape. So whatever total mass may have been in there at the beginning, when the gases escape, some of the mass is going to leave the crucible. Um, what I really want to talk about is the work side of things. So let's look at the next page. Um, you have to figure out which one of those, those four reactions, A, B, C, D, is the one that's actually happening. So to do that, you have to calculate how many grams of solid would be produced from the reaction. Um, and then you're going to compare that to your change in mass. So please pay close attention to me here when I say this. Um, all of these sets of work are going to be four fractions. And if you're going to have enough space to do them, you need to start your fractions all the way on the left edge of your paper. So right now, I want you to go ahead and for A, B, C, and D, draw all four of your fractions. Remember to start all the way on the left edge of your paper or you're not going to have enough space. Okay. For all of them, you are going to start with 
the number of grams being the initial mass that you end up finding right here. Okay, so, uh, and that's for all of them, it's going to be grams of sodium bicarbonate, which is this, NaHCO3. So, uh, we can't put a number in yet because you haven't weighed anything yet, but I do now know that all of these are going to be a number of grams of NaHCO3 over 1. So let's go ahead and fill that in. And all four of these for A, B, C, and D, you're going to put the same number as your number of grams. It's going to be whatever your initial mass is for all of them. Your initial mass is going to be the number you start with for all of them. Okay? Um, then, notice that they are asking us in this problem to find how many grams of solid. So, your mole bridge that you're going to pick for each of these is going to depend on what the solid is in the reaction. When we go look at these reactions, these little S's and G's, that means solids and gases. So, in reaction A, your mole bridge is going to be from the reactant to this one because this one is the solid. In reaction B, that's your mole bridge because this thing is the solid. In reaction C, our mole bridge goes to the solid. In reaction D, our mole bridge goes to the solid. Okay. Um, and I will even give you a hint right now that your mole bridge is going to go here for all of your four fractions. So like in part A, you're going to be going from moles of NaHCO3 on the bottom, following this bridge that we just drew in part A. It's one NaHCO3, and the bridge is pointing to one NaOH. So I'm going to do one mole of NaHCO3, and one mole of NaOH at the top. Okay, for part B, you're going to start with uh, its moles of NaHCO3, and I think I wrote a 1, but I think it's actually a 2. If we go look. Yeah, part B, it's actually a 2 NaHCO3, and then it points at 1 Na2CO3. So your bridge in this one, this should be a 2, sorry. It's pointing at 1 mole of Na2CO3. Okay, um, so on and so forth, all right? Um, so that, that by the end, and this problem, you should be ending with grams of NaOH, and this problem, you should be ending with grams of Na2CO3, and this problem, you should be ending with grams of, we drew the bridge to Na2O for part C, and for part D, NaH. Okay, now I've done like half of these fractions for you. You should definitely be able to finish this yourselves. In fact, while you are heating your sodium bicarbonate for 10 minutes, this is what you should be doing, is finishing these four fractions, finding your four answers for part A, part B, part C, and part D. Okay, this is what you should do while you're heating the Bunsen burner. Then, uh... Question two asks, which reaction, A, B, C, or D, best supports the data that you collected during the experiment? You're going to compare, you should write this down, I'm helping you here, you should, you're going to compare your answers to number one for A, B, C, and D. Compare those, compare these to whatever you end up writing in your data table as your change in mass. Or sorry, not your change in mass, um, your final mass. Compare those to your final mass. Whichever one is closest to your final mass tells you that according to your data, which reaction, A, B, C, or D, is the actual decomposition we're observing.
because at the end, you're not going to have baking soda anymore. You're going to have one of these four chemicals. We don't know exactly which one, but you're going to have one of these four. So if, you're, uh, if you've done your math correctly, then you should have um, one of your four answers over here should be close to whatever your final mass is here. And that will tell you which one of these reactions is the one that uh, you actually did. Basically, which one of these products is the one you actually made. So the closest one um, is going to tell you if you should answer A, B, C, or D. Okay, then it says calculate the percent yield of the solid. Remember that percent yield is the actual yield over the theoretical yield times 100. The actual yield is going to be whatever your final mass is. The theoretical yield is going to be your answer to number one for the reaction you picked in number two. Basically, if in number two you say, well, D is the correct reaction, if you decide D is the correct one, then whatever number you had here is your answer for D, that's going to be what you put on bottom here. Uh, number four asks, what gases are produced from the equation you picked? So basically, depending on A, B, C, or D, in A, the gas is CO2, and B, it's CO2 and water, and C, it's CO2 and water, and D, it's CO and oxygen. Um, you got to decide from A, B, C, or D which one you picked, and then go look and write down what the gases are. It says using the initial mass, calculate grams of, uh, in grams, the mass of each gas, and this value is the calculated value, not the value from the table. Basically, um, you're going to do a set of fractions again using your initial mass of grams of NaHCO3 again, but this time your mole bridge is going to go from NaHCO3 to the gases. So maybe write ourselves a note, mole bridge. Oh, and they want grams, so this is going to be four fractions. Mole bridge to gases in the problem. In whichever one, A, B, C, or D that you picked. Um, and you may end up with two sets depending on if you pick A, B, C, or D, some of them have one gas, some of them have two. Uh, number five, how does the calculated mass of the gases relate to the change in mass from the t data table? Well, you're going to have to look at your answers to this um, and compare your answers to number four to your change in mass in your data table. All right, your teacher has some things to tell you about safety for this lab.